Um, the following lecture that I will be giving is uh, not, uh, meaning there's difference of opinions on these issues, uh, but I'm trying to give you the opinions that are comprehensive, okay? Water is of the following types. There is pure water, there is used water, used water from the pure water. Then there's mixed water, and I'll tell you what I'm talking about in a sense. Uh, mixed water, and they come in two categories, mixed with pure things, and mixed with impure things. So pure water <coughs> is where water comes from. Water comes from the sky, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called water pure and other words have been used for it too. But water essentially is pure. And it's pure in whether it's from the sky or and from its sources. What are the sources of water? There are many. It can be hail, it can be ice, it can be water, it can be wells, it can be uh, a lake that's large. We'll be talking about this. Uh, if it's a large water body of water, uh, if, if it's continuously running, uh, then it is pure. So, so for example, let's say if you want to do wudu, you have to be able to do wudu from pure water. And so the water running in your faucets, the question is, is it pure or not pure? That's a discussion we can have, but ultimately it has to be coming from a lake or from the sky or from a dam that has collected the water, a reservoir of water. So, wudu has to be done with pure water. Number two is used water. What if you have used the water? So let's say I did wudu and some, that wudu water, some of it spilled, it lets into a bucket. Can somebody use used water to do wudu? This is another question. So, uh, for example, the Prophet did wudu and his uh, his own hands were wet from the wudu he did, and then he used it to uh, do mas'a on his head. Okay, this is an authentic hadith. So can you use used water? Uh, then the other is, okay, what if it's mixed with pure things? Let's say there is a smaller body of water. Let's say it's not a big lake, but it's very small body of water, but it ha it's large enough to be pure, which there's a difference of opinion how large a body of water has to be to be uh, considered flowing water. Because what happens to a body of water if it's still? It becomes stale and it becomes dirty. So you cannot do, and you know, these are things Islam is teaching us 1,400 years ago, right? Again, but this is very basic stuff within Islam. The question of what can you do a rule with? So like for example, I have my notes to keep my discussion limited. But, uh, but, you know, for example, the companions of the Prophet were going to go to an ocean and the Prophet said, you know, he allowed them, the, the hadith is longer than that, but he allowed them to do wudu with sea water because he said it was pure. It also, the Quran mentions that the water uh, is pure. Um, so, there are places where, but there is a discussion within Islam. For example, Imam Abu Hanifa says that any body of water that is, you know, 10 feet you know, 10 feet long, and as long as it's a few, it's deep, it will remain pure, okay? Whether that's scientifically correct or not is a, is a different issue, but uh, the, the point is, is that the scholars understood that if there is a body of water, let's say this is a bucket, <coughs> and the water is in here, you can't do wudu with that water, okay? You can't just do wudu with any water that's still. But at the same time, Islam is very practical. And you'll see this, inshallah, in my uh, le today's lecture, inshallah. So one thing is, what if it gets mixed? Let's say there's a body of water only, let's say, it's, let's say 50 feet. So let's say this is a pond, 50 feet, and there are trees over here, and leaves of the tree are falling, some animals are coming and also eat, drinking from here. So what is the state of this situation? Number one, if pure things fall into the water, clearly what? 
it remains pure. Okay. Uh, animals eating generally is considered pure, uh, especially the animals are divided into different groups. Uh, I will I will talk a little bit about that later, about the animals. Uh, but if an animal comes, Umar bin Khattab the Allah one, uh, there's a hadith that's very authentic from him on this issue. But you know, don't. The general rule also is, I'll, I'll come to that hadith in a little bit later. So one is pure things coming into the water, and one thing is impure things coming into the water. Now, if impure things come into the water, <coughs> the water essentially still stays pure until one of the three characteristics change. Uh, we have only like literally like five more minutes in this class, so, um, but let me just mention <coughs> a few, one, one, one or two more things, and then we can, uh, inshallah, continue next week. Um, water becomes impure. So let's say, you know, like I said, a, a, a sea or a lake is pure, right? Even if the sea looks brown, why? Because it's natural things in there that are making it look brown. Or sometimes the, the, the sea is, looks green because on the bottom of it is jade instead of sand. If the sand's on the bottom, it'll look brown. If there's jade on the bottom, it'll look green. Those are pure things. If pure things mix with water, it is essentially pure, especially if it is at the source. Um, like, you know, we can ask ourselves, what about using soap? Okay, here, before I mention this, let me mention this. If one of the three things change, if the, if the, if the color of the water changes to a color that does not look like water, if the taste of the water changes to such that it does not taste like water, and if the smell of the water changes such that it does not smell like water, yes? So, I noticed that this is why the Prophet uh, so some had the, um, the three preliminary parts of wudu which correspond to... Uh, That's right, yeah. So you have the, the sunnah of looking at the water, which is you're washing the hands, and then you're tasting it, and then you're smelling it, which is to essentially make sure that if this water is valid for wudu itself. So that's true. Okay, so you have the color, the taste, the smell. As long as these haven't changed, it's considered pure water as long as it's running water and it's not stale. Okay? There is some different opinions on some of these issues, but again, I'm giving you the comprehensive view on these issues. Now, <coughs> what if the color changes, but Let's say it's a lake again, and uh, let's say that there's algae, green algae. So the color of the water has changed again. Because algae is considered pure, the changing of the color of the water in a pond that is large uh, does not affect you from doing wudu in such a water. Because or also, for example, in running water, for example, if you change the color of water, let's say you're using soap, the, the color of the water and the smell of the water and the taste of the water changes, right? Because you're using soap when you're taking a shower. That is, but because soap is what? Pure. It's pure things of the world, right? So therefore, it does not invalidate your wudu. If you were to take something opposite of a soap, an impure thing, and do wudu or a shower with that, clearly that would not validate your wusuf or your wudu that you would be doing. Okay, so um, let me just finish here for today. Inshallah we will uh, continue uh, next time.